Carl Danana joins us again. Welcome back to the show, bud. Got a brother, always a pleasure, my man. How are you going? Oh, super rugby starts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we've all been distracted by other matters rugby during the week. We'll get on to those a little bit later. I just want to talk about the games, mate. We're kicking off tonight. We've got such a, a big year in front of us with the World Cup and everything else. Crusaders versus Chiefs. KT, give me a reason. Give me a good reason why the Crusaders won't win this again. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? I, I think um, for me, Marty, and I think they've highlighted it, 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 it's going to be end of an era for a number of players. This is going to be their last hurrah. So I think their last crusade, as they say. So um, I think they're going to use it as, as their fuel and, and their motivation. And that's where Ray's is so good, why he's been so successful, because he's able to create these themes that these, these his group uh, connect to and, and buy into and um, obviously a successful was so that that's why he's so good and I think that's the motivation he'll get um, with his team this season so it's going to be tough it's going to be tough man for, for any team to sort of knock them over but just, just in saying that I, I think the first game is always the one where you know you, you could be and just looking at the Chiefs last week they're pretty sharp after the Blues got out of them their number one team is pretty, pretty good man so um It'll be an interesting battle down there. Damien McKenzie back at number 10. Look, I've got my doubts about this. I look, I look at him and I think, man, you imagine him in, on, a, on a sevens pitch being able to control things, like almost like a um, a, a, a Cerevi kind of player. But number 10 control, running the cutter for the 15s, he's got to be a lot more disciplined. Where do you, you know, can you, th- do you think he can actually, does he have that in his game? I think against the structured team is probably what they want. You know, a bit of, a bit of chaos, and that's what DMAC brings. I'm with you. He needs space. I saw him last week. He, he's amazing in space, and uh, 10 doesn't give him that. Let's be honest. Like you say, you have to be really disciplined in, in both your defense and offensive sort of sort of um, sets. So I'm, I'm not a fan of him at 10, I'll be honest. I, I, I just think I just think he needs that, that room to roam. So 15 for me is probably, probably better for him. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I think... Obviously, Clayton McMillan's mad on the set piece, and he knows down there you gotta you gotta compete with the Crusaders at set piece. I'm sure they'll be there or thereabouts at Chiefs, but I think in the back line you gotta utilise what you have, and I think D-Max better in the in the 15. Yeah, I'm also, yeah, I'm looking at as far as the All Blacks go as well. I love the idea of him on the bench and coming in, as you say, creating space or causing mm-hmm. some chaos when it happens. Just harking back to what you said about the Crusaders, when you were captaining our seven side, we were nigh invincible. That was the aura that we had. And, you know, just thinking about that then, and players would come in, other players would go, but you'd keep that kind of that mindset, that consistency, and that, you know, that parallel is with the Crusaders, isn't it? I mean, you can change those faces, but it's the jersey doesn't change. Do you think that's a fair kind of comparison? And and obviously just drawing on your yeah. feelings from that time? 100%. 100%. And, and, it, and it's intertwined, like you said, amongst the whole, the whole ethos of, of the of the franchise. And I think that's, that, that's always been their secret. And, uh, I think the, the forefront of even recruiting players and, and just hearing how they go through it, how they even share ideas, you know, and and the and the and the, uh, and the, and the, and the coaches also together would be the the women's coaches or the NPC coaches or the Super Rugby coaches are all sharing ideas and and throwing it around and and, and getting IP off each other and it's a real that, that's their type of group, you know, and and I mean it's, it's a really open sort of sort of. Um, sort of forum and, and, I, and I think that's obviously sometimes other franchises don't get on with their other partners and whatnot and it's sort of stifled you play and you know what it's like money mm, it's mm. going to come from the top down yeah. if the top ain't ready then uh, nothing else will flow down so I think that that's obviously another reason why, why they've been so successful but you're right, you're right it's, it's intertwined in them and um, the young guys are married up with uh, an NPC guy and an All Black. So, you know, they're getting that common thread all the way through in that position. And so once an All Black moves on, the NPC guy steps up and the development guy goes into that spot. So it's always a natural progression. Do you think it always is also something that doesn't need to be said? When you come into a team like that, a champion team, a consistent team, and a team that wins all the time, that's what you buy into. That's what we expect from you. We don't have to explain that to you every minute of every day. You have to get it. Yeah, yeah, it's internal. It's internally done. You know, I mean, the coaches don't really say much; they just coach. But all the pressure is done internally, and that's where you want to be, right? Because there's nothing worse than getting scolded by your peers. So you want to live up to the expectations and what's been passed down, and, and that's what, as soon as a young buck comes in, these are the expectations that are required. If you don't do that, do that. Well, it's going to be up to you, but you're not going to last very long here because this is where we, this is where our standards are, and they're very high. So. You know, I think that's the way they do it. Is when they when they uh, tour kind of Tana, big brother, little brother, or 
big sister, little sister, they they, they, they get that consistency because those are what passed on right from the get-go. Who are the Crusaders' biggest rivals? And the sub-part of that question is, I look at the blue side that was uh, named to play the Highlanders, and it's pretty much, exa- well, it is, I think 14 or 15, exactly the same guys, the same faces from last year that lost the final. So the sub-part of that question is, can a team like the Blues raise the bar enough again to not, I mean, it's not challenge the Crusaders, you've got to win and beat these guys. Yeah, I saw enough last week, Marty, when the Blues just think that they can. I think mean, well, where they were so good last year was getting that consistency. <laughs> and that's what mm. dogged them in a number of years. I mean, I know Tunner's come back into the coaching group, so that would be a massive plus for them defensively. But I, I just saw some of the little snippets of their attacking game plan that were um, were mean. And I think Roger tuivasa Sheik's going to be an integral part of that. I think he needs to be. Um, I think he needs that game time. I wouldn't mind seeing him at fullback, but um, a lot of times I used him at first receiver and um, he's so good with his footwork. I think it just changed the dynamics a little bit from what I saw. And um, I think, yeah, I think there's enough um, for them to be able to, to challenge the Crusaders for sure. In terms of the players and in terms of the, with that World Cup carrot, Carl Tanana, Champion Sevens captain, is with us here and he'll be on the <laughs> sideline for Sky TV right throughout this comp, people on the platform. In terms of the, the players, the World Cup, genuine opportunities for players to impress. So, you know, and, and, and put themselves in Ian Foster's headspace and in that frame. So give me a couple of names that you're looking at that you think, okay, you keep an eye on these dudes. Oh, I, t- I don't want to sound biased here, but um, there's a dude, Rob Rush, who's, um, who's, who's number six for the Blues. I think, I think, Marty, uh, this year, I, I don't know if we get enough games on that, so anything, but uh, his attitude and the shape of him as a number six is unreal. You know, and, and I think he's that type of Jerome Kino type of player, and Jerry Collins. He's, and, and and it's not so much the physical ability, but it's just this toughness. You know, he's, he's just one of those rugged dudes, and we saw we saw it in the NPC last year. And and um, he, he he's massive for a young dude. But the thing that stood out for me, this is this is going back, um, I suppose about three years, just before COVID. Hit, he got brought into the Blues group as a train on squad, and. Um, there was a, you know, they had the young ones, and they got, they got, they got put in the bibs, and they got, uh, they had to play, they had to mark up against the ones, so Tui Pelotu and all those dudes. So there was one dude who just didn't give a stuff, and just went full noise at the number ones. I'm like, holy smokes, who's this, this dude? And it was Robbie, you know. Right. And then, um, yeah, right. And this is only like an 18, 19 year old dude having a go at it all back and didn't care, you know. And I, and I, and I think that's the sort of dude that we need on the side of a scrum and the black jersey and the number six, and I'm um, just that rough rugged. Like I said, Jordan Kano, hard hitter, who, who, who you don't want to run down his lane. So I think he's a guy that if he gets enough game time, um, that he, 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 could, he could be there or thereabouts, bro. Well, look, I'm thinking Lakai as well for the Hurricanes, mate. Maybe he's a year too soon, but I mean, there is actually depth there in those kind of positions here, aren't they? The other one is Lock. I mean, you know, you've got a couple of big boys I saw in that Highlanders lineup, you know, and I'm just thinking, okay, we are light there. I know Brody and Sam, I mean, they're our two best, but you take one of those guys out. I don't know who's actually got their hand up saying, I'm definitely the next one. Uh, I think um, Scotty Barrett, um, once again, I think because he's, you know, he, he can go between six and and back row, uh, second row, sorry, but again, it's his toughness. Uh, I think I know the All Blacks really, really rate him. So if he's not, if he's not on the side of the, side of the scrum in the sixth jersey, he's going to be, um, he's going to be in the second row, I think. So, I mean, going up to Europe, you need those big boppers and you need guys that are, are mobile. And I think that's what the All Blacks are looking at. They need those guys in the front five to be mobile, but still, um, still be able to to rumble up, 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 up the middle. You know. So I think I know they've been working on their rolling ball defence, which has sort of come along last year and. Um, so now I think uh, it's the mobility stuff that's um, getting on the puck, and, and Scotty's got that. So I think he'll he'll naturally be the be the third third lock. I think. Super rugby we're talking about with KT on the platform. Crusaders, obviously, I mean they're right up there. They're number one in terms of their their rivals. I mean, all of us probably think the New Zealand sides more than anything. Out of the Australian sides, is you know are, are the Brumbies or or any of the other teams actually capable? Do you think of get of not just getting there but upsetting and overturning one of our best teams on the way to a final? Uh, I mean, the Brumbies were unlucky last year. <laughs> Eden Park, I'll be honest, against the Blues, uh, I thought there were there was an opportunity for them to get a turnover. It was it was a penalty? I didn't get the call, but I mean, like anything, we always dust them up in the first round because they don't they haven't. Um, sort of acclimatised to our type of rugby, but, but the more they played us, they were able to adapt quite quick. So it'll be interesting to see 
with Eddie, how his ethos runs through that yep, Australian yep. rugby now. Obviously, he's going to go back and change a lot of things. He's old school. Marty. He's old school as, so get, 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 make no mistakes. He's just going to go old school on them and, and thrash them and, and, and whatnot like he did with the, the English. They just didn't like it, so they punted him. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how there's, these, Aussie, these Aussie young bucks sort of take Eddie's instructions after Wren's because two totally different coaches, you know. So that, that's what I'm interested in. It'll, it'll be... Eddie will come in, and I'm sure he'll get an up curve initially, but um, whether it lasts at the World Cup, I'm not sure. But to answer your questions, <laughs> I think the Brumbies will be there. They're, 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 they're quite good. Uh, I think New Zealand don't give those that, that team the respect that it probably deserves. I think the Reds will be, won't be be as good. I see Taniela Tupou just signed with the Rebels, um, who, who, who I don't think will be any good either. So, um, no, nah, I, I got anyone legitimately for me is probably probably the Brumbies, money. You got the uh, MP versus uh, Fijian and Drua game to, to, that's Saturday uh, tomorrow afternoon at at Mount Smart. What do we when we had Aaron Major on the show yesterday? Just fantastic to talk to. I mean, look, you know, but you know, as much as I love these teams, I love everything that they bring. I also want them to win. So, what do we expect this year? What is the what is the basic from them? Not just a couple of wins, you know, because we want both of these teams to progress. So, what are you expecting? Yeah. Um... Be interesting. I just want to ask Mage tomorrow what, what he's worked on to help them take that next step. There's probably another couple of games uh, the one up should have won and didn't, you know. So they don't have that uh, surprise tag anymore, you know. I think a lot of teams be very wary of them, but um, everything's built on their defence, and I think if they're able to keep discipline there, that they will challenge a lot of teams, you know, and and because they're just big G units. So mm. I think if they stick to the game plan and which was going up the middle using their physicality and smoking blokes on D, then they'll tip up a couple of teams if they're not on point or they want to see north. So um, they're expecting a couple more wins that they got last year um, in terms of the Moana team, whether they can make the finals, I'm not totally convinced. But um, you know, I think tomorrow is going to be a massive celebration. We've got the Fiji and Jewel coming first time to New Zealand. So how many supporters they'll have there. So I'm really looking forward to, the, to seeing how they jam. And I like their style of rugby. It's very free-flowing. So... Uh, um, you know, they've got to be my favourite second team. Obviously. Everyone, so, everyone's yeah, favourite second. Everyone, look, they're totally. <laughs> yeah. Look, and, and and I don't know whether you saw it or not, but I, I was watching the um, Indigenous All Stars versus Māori All Stars at Rotorua a couple of weeks ago, mate. I loved everything about it. I loved everything about the occasion. I just love the the point of difference. It makes you actually feel makes you feel as a parlangi down here, mate. That this is why I, li- I love living in the. Uh, this is why I love li- living in the Pacific because I love this. You know, I love this stuff, mate. And I know that Mount Smart tomorrow will yeah. rock and roll more than it will for any other game. This weekend, there'd just be something special about it. You're going to be sidelined and just breathing it. Oh yeah, hundred percent, man. And I'm the same with you, mate. I like the differences and and different teams that bring different styles, different vibes, you know. And and, and you're right, that, that that's something unique to us down here in the Southern Hemisphere. I know you're a massive supporter as always. So yeah, and I'll be I'll be I'll be right down there smoking some carver. It'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, this is. I, I don't know what the commentary will be like. The bottom lip might be a bit numbered. <laughs> Mate, if Ruben's around, he's always good for one afterwards. You know that as well. He's great. Hey, let's just touch base finally with the. You know, we have we've had Razor on the program, we've had Eddie and Foster on the program this week, and you know, I, I look whatever people, whatever their people's beliefs, affiliations, and 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 actually preferences are. Lord, I just wish, you know, New Zealand Rugby had a board meeting yesterday and, and I knew that the, nothing had come of it, no statement had come of it. I just, it just made it, but it pains me. I just want, for the sake of everyone, can't we just get this done? Can't we just do, get, make the decision, get it done or whatever so that we stop talking about it and get on with it? Um, I, I can't agree with you more, but I'll be honest. Like, I think that's always been a feature of New Zealand Rugby is our solidarity and, like you say, they make a decision and everyone's clear what's going on and, and this whole drama has been there's been more flip-flops than the Harvey Arnold before yeah, you know like, yeah. one minute Foster's in next minute they're going to kick him out Razor's in and then oh no nah, Fozzie Fozzie's back in there and now they've made this announcement we're going to do it beforehand but we're not going to really tell anyone when it's like there's so much unnecessary jibber drama that doesn't need to be I'm, I'm going to do just make the decision accept it so dudes can do it and then move on you know and I think that's what's holding us back I'll be honest like we just said before at the top's Piggly piggly, what's we're supposed to trickle down to, to everything else and then the company? So, um, something needs to be done, needs to be done quick, whatever way they do it, because it's just it's just getting ridiculous now. I'll be, I'll be honest. Looking forward to uh, the first weekend, mate, and keep it in touch right throughout the tournament. Go well, thanks, bud. Always a pleasure, brother.